uh, folks that are celebrating uh, Passover tonight, and it's um, the Easter week, so I think folks are on spring break. So I get, did get a lot of notes from students uh, and, and others with their apologies that it, it's a tough week for people to, to meet. And so I still wanted to charge through and get through some um, information, and um, it's great. Thank you so much to the, um, our clients are here. We've got Kim and Courtney, and we've got uh, Bonnie Shelnut is here as well as our uh, the volunteer subject matter expert and liaison with Grace Centers of Hope. So thank you for everybody for, for stopping by tonight. Um, and I'll try to keep my comments uh, relatively brief so we can get on with our evening. Um, but again, thank you to everybody for, uh, for joining us tonight. And uh, the countdown begins. So the whole theme of tonight is really our push to the finish here. We've got um, a due date that we committed of May 3rd to get our uh, pilot uh, deliverables ready for um, for the client and uh, all expectations as we get as we move forward tonight we'll talk about it we're not looking for perfection <laughs> at this point we're looking for some good prototypes some good exemplars that um, we can start testing out with students and seeing if things are working um, oops you know what I think folks might be moving my uh, my thing around on me here hang on a second let me move that around okay um, so here's our agenda tonight. We did have the opportunity to do a, a little bit of a formative evaluation based on the design documents. So we'll talk about that a little bit, what the general feedback was. Um, all that feedback has been sent to all five of the coordinating designers and the expectation is they'll read through it, synthesize it, and then um, and push that back out to the teams. So if any of the coordinating designers have not received it for whatever reason, um, it didn't get through in the email or whatever it might be, let me know. Um, I sent out information as I had it as of Friday and fortunately we had folks participate a little bit more over the weekend and we have a total of 42 pieces of uh, information for folks. So I think for most teams, it was between eight and 12 um, respondents gave them feedback. So that's great. That's a, should give you some good um, information on next steps, what you need to do as you move toward the development push. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit tonight about what we're looking for in terms of the deliverables, because there's certainly a lot of um, range on what that could be. Um, also talk a little bit about the idea of our home base, so where things are going to be stored as we um, as we uh, finish things up and as we transfer and pass things off to Grace Centers of Hope for them to also be able to use the uh, home base that's been created. Um, we also have a great opportunity for me personally, uh, a group from Arizona State University has reached out to me and it's an evaluation class and they were looking for instruction to evaluate and so they're actually going to be um, evaluating our process, our service learning collaborative process and so Vicki and Corey may be joining us tonight as well. Uh, but what that means is that um, we'll be asking so, for some additional feedback from the student participants um, and also from Bonnie and um, and Courtney and Kim to just, uh, again, with the whole idea of how did the process work virtually, uh, working with students, uh, working with folks we, we don't know each other, what were the expectations and, and then how did that compare to reality. So um, that that's something that I'll talk about in, in very briefly. but. In, in a nutshell, just keep an eye out for some survey material that will be coming out in email to you, just asking for about a 10-minute response in a survey. Um, and then, uh, kind of exciting news, we uh, put in a proposal way back when to AECT, which is an academic conference. Um, it's the Association of Educational Communication and Technology. It's their annual conference, and it was accepted. And so that's one of the huge reasons that we are doing this type of service learning work, is for students to be able to get credit for the experience and this is one really awesome way to get credit. So if, for students who are going to be at AECT, I'll talk about that right at the end, um, uh, how you can uh, participate with us in showcasing the work that you've done on the project. Um, and you'll be able to add it to your CV and your resume and <laughs> get some credit for the experience. Um, so in terms of the evaluation feedback, as I said, we sent it out to all of the faculty advisors and to all of the students. Um, it was a, a survey monkey and um, went through for pilot A, it was different than the other pilots. Pilot A was just a general fill in the blank uh, of the perceptions of their um, project as they were describing it. And then pilots B, uh, 1, 2, 3, and C um, was really looking at the nitty gritty of 
the um, instructional design piece of it. So the presentation, the active learner practice, the feedback opportunities, assessment, those types of things. And so it was a, a structured differently. So feedback A for pilot team A, um, in general, everyone was really impressed with the collection of resources that you've come up with. And the, in general, if I had to summarize it, most of the comments were along the lines of, okay, that's a great collection of resources. Now the harder part of it comes into play where you need to then go through and, and document um, the review in terms of what it is that you're um, you're reviewing and evaluating. And so I, I made the comment a couple times um, of, um, of perfect is the enemy of done, uh, meaning that uh, you have a lot of things that you're looking toward um, eventually collecting and, uh, on the spreadsheets that you put together. Um, so if you need to find ways to pare that down so that you're able to complete it by May 3rd, that's fine. So if some of those columns that you have um, li listed there that you're hoping to collect information on, if that is something you need to pare down, feel free to do that. Um, and Jason's looking for audio. Okay. Can everybody, if I could get in the text chat, are others able to hear me? I think it might just be Jason and, and Sharon might not be able to hear. Not sure. Yeah, I think, um, I think, okay, audio is great. So I'm sorry. I think Jason's just going to have to keep futzing with his audio a little bit. Um, and then um, Rhonda, I'm not sure. Let me, let me, do you want to take a... Um, I don't know if you have uh, the ability to speak. You had a question, though, Rhonda, about um, pilot team A, how to submit. Not sure what that means. And I think you might mean how do you submit your deliverable. So we'll talk about, if that's what you mean, Rhonda, the deliverable, we'll get to that in one second. Um, okay, so for pilot uh, B, C, I mean, B and C, again, they're working more on the instructional units. Um, great start to an outline in general. So it looks like you spent a lot of time thinking about the content that you're going to be presenting, the general learning outcomes that you're hoping to achieve through your instructional unit, and pretty much the, the, the bulk of the feedback that came from the reviewers it was pretty consistent across all the teams is now is the time to really think about those instructional activities. How are you going to engage the learner with the content? How are you going to involve the tutor in some type of learner to instruction interaction? Um, how are you going to sequence the learner through the content? Um, a few kind of words of warning in terms of watching the reading level, making sure that all the terms that you're using are defined, acronyms are defined, free of jargon, and then um, incorporating existing resources. This is, um, is really a big deal. We've talked about this all throughout uh, the project that not only will be the deliverables that we turn in be licensed as a Creative Commons license to allow others to use our work. But really a huge part of what we're doing is not reinventing existing wheels. And so Pilot A has done a great job of coming up with a roster of open educational resources. And so um, as you're putting your materials together, teams B and C, um, those four teams, if you can just please make sure you're keeping an eye out for available already developed resources that you can link to um, and so that that ties into these main phases of instruction so you may find videos that are out there that would allow you to present information rather than having to recreate something you may find um, some type of practice exercises or something out on the internet um, you may also find other type of uh, mastery assessments those types of things so kind of keep an eye out for those um, you know, rather than um, rather than recreating it. And hang on one second, I'm just going to read Pilot A reviewed by disciplines on the Google Docs. Okay. I, I'm not sure, Rhonda. I still, I'm <laughs> sorry, Rhonda. I'm still having trouble understanding. Maybe that's just information you're sharing. I'm not sure what your text chat is. And so just back to, to then pilots B and C. So what I'm talking about in terms of thinking about the um, the the instructional activities. I keep going back to this matrix that I've shared with you a couple times. So if you think of the instructional phases along the left side that you have to in some way, shape, or form present or display um, or somehow discuss content, you can either do that through the learner working in independently with the content. That could be something that they're working with the tutor on, which would be the learner to instructor interaction. And you may actually find ways to think about ways for learners to interact with each other. Um, and I know for the most part, most teams were kind of leaving that right-hand column 
purposely blank and not having a, a ton of learner to learner interaction but that's that's by, by choice you can you know if you can think of some ways to be able to do that in maybe small groups or something like that um, and then that just carries through to all the other uh, phases of instruction. How are you going to get the learner to actually practice with the material? Um, is it something that maybe they'll uh, work on alone and then have a tutor run through the, um, the answers and some type of you know, feedback and guidance uh, phase that they go through? So contemplate this matrix as you're thinking about sequencing the learner through the instruction, thinking about those actual activities that they're going to be engaged with. Um, okay, great. I see. I see what you're saying here now, Rhonda. Your uh, your doc. Yep. Okay. Um, okay. So other development considerations. The uh, if you take a look at our uh, main web page, I now and I'll show you right over here. If this is what our main web page looks like, I now have on the left margin uh, folders for each of the five teams where you'll start putting your deliverables. So this is more when you get to the final form and you're ready for them to be, um, you know, ready ready to go live with them. And we'll talk a little bit about what, how that will interface with the home base that Eric has been developing. Um, but if you um, if you take a peek there, what we're really looking for you to do, considering we have a really short development window now, we're talking about three weeks um, from now till May 3rd, so it's not a tremendous amount of time. So PowerPoint is absolutely fine for your de deliverable. And so the idea there would be you would have the, the presentation, um, li either links to something that you're taking them out to videos or it's some type of written presentation that you'd like them to read. You've embedded your practice um, opportunities, again, on that PowerPoint, um, your, your assessment activities, whatever it may be. And then, um, the again, this whole idea of branching out, if you need to, with links to other resources. And I just really want to reiterate something I've been saying through this whole process. What we're developing for this short window, 11 weeks, we, we know it's not going to be all the bells and whistles and you know, all, with all these e-learning modules or what have you. The idea is to get a working prototype that we can then step back over the summer and look at and say, okay, does this work for us? Is this going to work for the folks at Grace Centers of Hope to have this type of module developed on a grander scale? So that's why we keep saying over and over and over, PowerPoint is absolutely fine for your deliverables. And um, it's something that you can quickly upload to that Google folder that I was sharing before which is over here. So each, again, each team would just click on the folder and, um, and then upload their, their deliverables, the PowerPoint right to it. Um, let's see, question uh, for Bonnie. Okay, you know what, Bonnie, why don't I go ahead and unmute you and you, maybe you can, uh, you can ask that question directly. Yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. Okay. Yeah, and I, I haven't uh, asked or talked to Kim and Courtney about this, but I'm just wondering to what extent they now utilize learner to learner or do they foresee using many learner to learner activities? Is it something that you think would be viable in your environment? I'll let, I just unmuted Kim and Courtney. I don't know, Corner, Courtney, okay. do you use much um, small group activities, for example, with the, the learners working together? Um, not really currently. Uh, most of our students are at different um, points in their learning like they learn you know on their own individually at their own pace um, so that's my only thought about that so I'm thinking through that I mean I don't think we're opposed to that you know um, but currently they don't yeah and kind of going back to that matrix that we had before I think most student groups were eliminating that right hand column and I think mm -hmm. some groups had thought about maybe thinking of some type of asynchronous discussion board or something like that that could be used Again, those may be things that have gone by the wayside as, as they've moved on. I, I, I think that I was uh, basing the question on what I perceive to be the way in which Courtney and Kim uh, structure or have to structure because people being at different levels. Learner to learner interaction can be very helpful and viable uh, uh, for people that are especially working towards uh, or on the same project. Uh, with different points of view. So I'm just saying there might be some opportunities. It might be, for instance, in the computer uh, knowledge yeah, that might one. be uh, one in which you say, hey, I found this tip I want to share. 
so I could see it really working in there. And yeah, I, I agree. Look, uh, I agree I, with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. When I looked at the computer design, I found it rather sparse, and that I think that that would be one in which, uh, uh, because tips when it comes to technology, that's where you really catch on to things. And so that's I, I just thought I'd offer that. And Kim, I, Kim uh, Phillips is saying I think I heard her say that she thought that was uh, where it would work as well. Okay. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, okay, I'm just gonna, we're getting a little bit of hiss. I think it might be Courtney. I'm just gonna mute you, Courtney, um, and, and, and Bonnie. I'm sorry. We're just okay. getting a little bit of hiss off of the, uh, okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. And I just wanted to circle back to, if everybody has a chance to see in the text chat, Rhonda, um, put a Google Doc in there. Um, that's how she's documenting her review. So that looks awesome. That looks fantastic. Thank you, Rhonda, for that. Um, okay, so I'll stop talking here soon, I promise. I just wanted to let um, everybody, or just remind everybody, we also have um, the home base that Eric Ludwig has started laying out for us within Weebly. And this is a pure repeat of what he had covered with us last week. But this is the URL if you're interested in looking at it. Um, and the idea is that this will be something we can turn over to Kim and Courtney. Um, it's, it's very user friendly. If you're comfortable using Word documents, you basically can use the, um, the features that are in Weebly if there's not a lot of um, a learning curve uh, to get up and running. And so we'll pass the credentials over to you to, to use as you'd like. And so the, what we'll be doing is working on um, resources that we'll populate within these different icons. And so right now these are just placeholders. So we'll put our materials in that second middle blob there under GED preparation. So when you get in it based on which one we're working on, um, like for example, student group, let's say B2, we'll have a, the link. And then that will take you directly to that Google folder I was showing you before. And so that that's how they'll you'll, you'll go ahead and access the material that way. And again, this is not fancy. This is not flashy. That's not our goal right now. All we're trying to do is create a, a workable framework that can be a way to deliver our prototypes um, so that we can make sh- that we can make sure that we're on the right track as we move forward. Um, so again, I keep saying over and over, don't worry about the flash, don't worry about the bells and whistles. We just want to get the guts of it um, uh, up and running so we can we can use that. Okay, and so here's just another example from that Weebly, and you can go ahead and poke around on that. Um, and so now just kind of winding down um, some things that I wanted to talk about. Um, the evaluation of me I mentioned when we started out tonight, the, the folks from Arizona State University will be looking at the service learning process. So this is really your opportunity for all the participants, um, but the client side as well as the students, to uh, offer feedback on how this experience was. This is a pilot in every sense of the word. Uh, um, five months ago, this we, we didn't even think this would be running, so it was quite a quick little uh, from start to where we are right now. We went from like zero to sixty pretty quickly. So your feedback will be instrumental in us working on refinements for what we do when we work on this project again in the fall. Um, and so please, when you see the link that in the email that comes out asking you to respond to the survey, the students have worked on. Um, Again, these are students from Arizona State University in an evaluation class. They've worked out a survey that takes about 10 minutes to complete, so hopefully you'd be able to do that. And then for Kim and Courtney and Bonnie, maybe um, we can talk about this afterwards, but they, the students were interested, very interested in, in having a brief phone conversation with you over the next uh, week or two just to get your perspective on what worked for you, um, kind of like Bonnie was saying, at the end of every semester, teachers always do this, saying, what could we do better, and uh, how can I make this easier for the next time? And so that's really the spirit of all of this, is to get at, give everybody an opportunity to, um, to share their input on, on what worked in the process and what would be your recommendations for us to look at changing in the future. Um, and then this is really exciting news, as I kind of uh, highlighted a moment ago, is the, uh, the ACT conference. I think most of the students are aware of this. It's our big annual convention. It's um, for most of those uh, in the instructional design community. We head to this convention every year. It's um, this year, November 4th through the 8th. 
uh, I submitted two proposals. One has been accepted. I'm waiting to hear for the second one. The first one was accepted. It's the design showcase. So all the team, student team members are invited to help us display the work. And the way it works, we'll have a corner of a, a conference room. Um, we'll have posters and web um, laptops open to show the materials and people will come up and ask us questions. So it's very one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations, great exposures. Usually the faculty are mingling around so you get to meet faculty from different programs. Um, and it's just really great exposure for you to get your name out there um, as, as someone in our field. And um, I, like I said, I'm waiting then for an additional uh, proposal to hear if we made it. It's about for a panel uh, for, for designers for learning related to this project. So please add this experience to your resume and your CV because we want to make sure everybody has a chance to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to get appropriate credit for all the hard work you've done. Um, so with that, I think I'm going to take the risk here and open up uh, our mics. So we're probably now going to have kind of spotty audio, so please bear with us. But if you, in the text chat, if folks would like the opportunity to, um, to speak, if you want to put in the text chat that you had a question, um, I'll, I'll open up your mic kind of one at a time. Otherwise, our audio might go a tad haywire, a lot of static. Um, any of the uh, coordinating designers? I see Candace is here. Did, Candace, do you want to, um, if I gave you the mic, did you want to say anything or have any questions about your feedback? Uh, well, it was it was very helpful. We um, had a bit of technical difficulty with our um, uh, communications within our group. Uh, the person who put together our outline um, was having internet connectivity difficulties, and so um, the other the remaining members um, we've we've changed uh, a little bit about what we well we've changed it quite a bit actually from what we had originally posted there, but. Um, we we do have the the rough draft together and it is it's it's looking uh, pretty good at this point so i hope that's okay we we kind of um we were kind of out of the loop with the communications uh there for a little while um but we we i think we're in pretty good shape oh excellent so how does that uh work for you as far as having your de deliverables done on a powerpoint is that going to be you know a bummer for you <laughs> Is that kind of a welcomed relief that you don't have to go out and develop, you know, e-learning or, or whatever? Is that working out okay? Oh, I think PowerPoint's going to be great. Um, we we can we can easily uh, convert what we have uh, what we have outlined into uh, into a PowerPoint, and um, you know, we I've even because we we have had so many different ideas that we have. Uh, generated with this it, it was a virtual brainstorm of ideas um, and, I, and I've, I've tossed it out to my team and I haven't heard back from anyone but if if we had you know some other ideas even if they're just in rough form would you be interested in receiving um, any kind of, of uh, outline or, or uh, sure. plan or, or something it, it, like that you um, know what might in tell me if this would work have, just Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to, just to give the, the client more more options to choose from because there's, we've had so many really good ideas. The original outline that that uh, one of our members um, uh, produced, there there was a lot of merit with that as well. And, and you know, like I say, unfortunately, we haven't been able to, to flesh that out yet, but um, it's just, and I'm not saying that for sure we're going to do this. It, it was just an idea that that I had. You know, if if we have time and and if if that's something that the other team members are interested in doing, you know, just to to put forth some of these other ideas as, as possibilities because there's there's a million different ways to go with this, right, and right. you know, to give the client as more options to you know as as possibilities for the next round was something I I would like to know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we certainly don't want to not showcase any work that you thought. So if you think there's a way, even, you know, I don't want to create more work for you, but if it does seem like you have a, a little right, bit of a right. fork, for, you know, a fork in the road where it's like, well, we could go this way or we could go this way, feel free to have like option A <laughs> and option B. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm not saying like to reinvent the wheel or, you know, to create two projects, but if, for example, on your 
um, practice activity. You had a, a thought, you, you, you kind of had consensus on this one idea, but then someone else was going, you know what, this is not a bad idea also, and wanted to spend a little time developing that um, through. That's fine as well. Because in, in my opinion, the, our whole idea right now is to try to figure out um, a workable way to um, come up with these one hour roughly one hour units of instruction. So if you've got some good ideas, you know, make sure you, you, you definitely um, share them. And yeah, Bonnie, I'll, I'll let me unmute you. Sorry, I keep muting Bonnie. <laughs> Go ahead, Bonnie. Okay, well, uh, I really appreciate what Candace said. And in business, what we would often do, if we didn't have time to develop, we would have a last screen that said, uh, or a, it, whether it was in our design document or uh, in uh, in something that we were giving to the in the final deliverable would be future enhancements, uh, you know, uh, ways to improve that kind of thing. Because oftentimes we were limited just as we are here by time, and then we would be limited mm -hmm. uh, by budget. <laughs> and <Right. laughs> okay. so so we would say, you know. Like I said, it could be called possible enhancements or uh, other, you know, alternative uh, uh, learning strategies. Those kinds of things. Give it, give it a title that you okay. might want. Okay. And I just want to open okay, up to the, also to, to 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 Candace and and to any of the student designers that are on. We we have Kim, Courtney, and Bonnie here, so it's an awesome opportunity. If you, does anyone have any questions, either in the text chat or if you'd like audio to be able to speak. Um, or are you just pretty much now nose to the grindstone? <laughs> Pump out your deliverables, that's fine too. But we have a very unique opportunity that they're all here tonight. Uh, I, I had a question um, just in terms of, of some of the different ideas that, that we have come up with. Um, both of the, both the outline that, that was posted and, and what we, um, the the variation on that that, that we have come up with um, are taking uh, our our topic which was the Civil War and using it to illustrate and to teach about the uh, the reading anchors and I I just uh, was curious if uh, what the um, what the client would have to say uh, about about that approach or, or something more separate as in um, teaching reading separately from teaching um, the content uh, because that, that was one idea that, that we had uh, because we were trying originally to address a much lower reading level uh, and it's hard to it's hard to uh, put the Civil War in uh, third grade reading terms um, especially with the like the text from the Gettysburg Address and, and things like that. So um, is the combination uh, more useful to you or would something, at least at the lower reading levels, that is separate be more useful to you? Courtney, do you want to speak on that or do you want me to? Um, doesn't matter, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, I think when we looked at it, we thought the reading level was a little bit too low based okay, on okay. Um, based on where they need to be so although they may not be at that level I think if we stay in that six to eighth grade which probably will help you a lot with that um, that would be that would be fantastic um, as far as I went okay. through that document and I looked at your idea of doing that Civil War and I actually like that idea of you blending some um, history learning in with that whole module of learning how to read so i thought that was mm -hmm. a, i thought that okay, was a okay. good idea to incorporate the two rather than having a reading module that sits on its own i'd rather have some learning along with that so i, I really liked that idea um okay i thought that was creative and uh yeah i thought that was great Okay, well, I, I have to give credit where credit is due. That was Jennifer's idea. We're just expounding on it. So. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I would uh, add to that is that I actually I think from uh, a, um, what, whether you call it a, a research perspective, of students need to learn reading in the context of something else. Uh, when they just have a reading assignment that doesn't have any relevance to 
what they're you know what they're supposed to be doing it doesn't have as much impact so i think that this uh, works very well not just i think it i think it's been shown that it does um and so mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it was very it, it was a positive way to go um and i think that that's also used in one of the other modules where they're doing with world war ii uh comparing two mm -hmm. uh, documents uh, that are uh, within while you're learning about world war ii is, is isn't that is my memory serving me right, Jennifer? Is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go. Um, okay, well, j we, the reason we were thinking that was when we were looking at, at some of the reading questions, or like the sample GED test questions, uh, we didn't we didn't notice any, we didn't find any that were, that, that that contained content. They they were just more generic sort of standalone reading comprehension questions. And so we, we just wanted to make sure that what we were doing was something that you would actually be able to use and that would facilitate the student's success on the GED. Yes, I think it will. Thank you. Uh, and okay, I'm not, thank you. I, I'm curious, um, Kim and Courtney and Bonnie, have you had a chance to look at uh, pilot A? I would think if nothing else, if we if you we gave you no other deliverable, at least that roster of resources, yes. it, it, to me, it yeah. seems very impressive what's already out right. there that you maybe didn't right. even know was there. Yeah, I, I know that I looked at it. I imagine that the other, uh, Kim and um, and Courtney did as well. When I, I again, I didn't look get onto this till today. I spent uh, uh, quite a bit of time just taking a look at each of those things. I thought the list of resources would is going to be extremely valuable, and especially as they translate those over into the little report, the commentary, so that uh, we as uh, Kent, Courtney, especially, who's the instructor, will be able to look at that and make recommendations based on those reports and not just have the URL. Yeah, I agree. I had a quick question for Kim and Courtney. How, how is it going now that we've had a few months under our belt with the new GED? Have you had any students actually sign up for it yet, or is it still too soon for anybody of, that you know of to have actually taken the new version of the test? Uh, it's, it's definitely been too early. I think our oldest student uh, right now is about three months in. Um, we have four students right now out of our eight that um, we believe are going to be able to take their GED by the end of the time they're with us. We're moving them along pretty quickly and so um, yeah so we're learning every day we're learning more and more so. Okay great excellent. Well I'm, I'm done with my material I wanted to cover and like I said I very open if anyone else wants to take the mic um, just t tell me in the text chat and I'll open it up um, to you but um, that's all I had and I just thank everybody over and over for <laughs> everything you're doing it's, it's just wonderful and hopefully the students will get um, some good exposure and get some good uh, pats on the back at AECT and other places like that for the hard work you've done and, and hopefully most importantly I hope we can really help Grace Centers of Hope um, as they move forward as well. So yeah, that's we really all I had. Appreciate it. Everything everybody's doing, we really appreciate all the time and energy and effort you're putting into this project. That's great. And Jennifer, I, I think it's, you have just, again, I, I you may think I'm uh, overdoing this. I think your coordination of this has been outstanding. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you go over and above what I expected, <laughs> and I'm very thankful for it. Uh, so, uh, well, bless, no, bless you, Jennifer. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Fed. Honestly, this is, like I've said before, a labor of love. I just, this is why I got into education. I think this is what we all can do with uh, mm -hmm. all the individual talents we have come together and, mm -hmm. and, um, and do this. And, and like I said, uh, this is a perfect segue. So when you do see that link that's coming from the ASU students on evaluating the project in general, please do take the 10 minutes that they say it will take um, to provide us some feedback so we can smooth out some of the bumps in the road that, that an inevitably happen in a process like this so mm -hmm. all right well thanks everybody so much enjoy uh, your holidays we've got a bunch of holidays happening this week <laughs> so right. whichever one you're celebrating um, a happy Easter happy uh, Passover and what, whatever it may be um, but thank you to everybody and uh, we'll touch base before the whole thing wraps up on May 3rd good night everybody thank you thank you everyone good night, good night. Good night. Bye, bye thank you